Hello and welcome to Cursed Content Club where pay your fucking riders! <laughs> pay them! Pay, pay your riders! This didn't have to happen. They could have paid them at any point. They had many months it's, it's, to just pay them. It's already, it's already been longer than the fucking one that created the movie we're about to watch. <laughs> It didn't just create that, though. It also created, what was it, Hero Season 2, or was it Season 3? I think it's the and tail end. Of the end of it's two, 2 and 3, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, the end of Season And Quantum of Solace, or as the smartest <laughs> people on Earth call it, Quantum of Suckass. <laughs> I wish I was that good with words. Doesn't stop being funny. I'm your host, Chris Wolfhart. With me are Dan and Bob Video Games from Gigaboots.com. Mutant Powers Within? I like Gambit. And Dr. Agro from Dr. Agro. Jimmy Chonga. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> oh, that's, we're, that's a we're clever watching, reference. <laughs> we're watching X-Men Origins Wolverine. You know, I've never seen this movie, but I did play the game. Oh. Huh. Oh, my. Because this, this was from that really, that horrible era of gaming called 7th Gen, where it's like, this doesn't get, make you break out in hives. It must be a 10. <laughs> yeah, that's how people talked about it. Uh, I mostly remember getting sick of fighting guys by the end, so I would pick them up with the grapple and then throw them off a ledge. <laughs> that's how you do it. That's how I dealt with most enemies in the back half of that game. Man, if that isn't every bad beat em up action game ever made. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, Dan? I just spent the entire DLC of... Uh, the Ninja Theory DMC doing that. <laughs> Does anybody have any fucking thing to say about this movie before we go watch it? I didn't know this was a product of the writer's strike. So what? Like there was a script and then they had to start filming and no one could do a treatment again. And they just, well, that's what we've got. I guess. Damn. Yeah. I hear the guy who plays Deadpool, like just wasn't able to improv stuff. And that's why. Things yeah. happen the way they do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're we're getting ready for another one of those to happen. <laughs> we sure are. It's a flat circle, gentlemen. Yeah. Thank, thank, the, thank God the the actors' strike also stopped that. Right. Because from what I heard during the filming of Deadpool three, they kept going up to uh, Ryan Reynolds and being like, "Hey, what what do you think?" Is like, no, <laughs> I'm not allowed. Yep, I'm an actor. Can't write. <laughs> Uh, what I was going to say is I remember this being the best one of the standalone Wolverine movies. Uh, that is correct. And also very sad. <laughs> I remember the I have, opening I know, being really cool. The, yes. But I, I think the, the next one where he goes to Japan is a better movie than this. How much do you like green screen sets? Because that kind of dictates how good that next one is. Uh, I, I was a huge Cinematic Universe X-Men fan. This was the first one I saw in theaters and went, oh, those special effects are bad. <laughs> so when later I heard, yeah, an assembly edit of this movie leaked and the special effects look so terrible in it, I'm like, yeah, I've seen the film, <laughs> right? I, I know a lot of people who swear by Logan. How much do you like The Last of Us? Uh, not at all, actually. Oh, well, maybe. <laughs> maybe <laughs> it also has maybe the dumbest final action sequence in an X-Men movie, which is incredible. <laughs> oh, my God. That's an axis on which I've never thought to compare them. <laughs> How dumb is the last sequence? I'm like, apocalypse is coming to the top. Here it goes. <laughs> See, I, I, I just looked at it and I'm like, well, it, it doesn't have Hulk's redneck kids in it. So what's the, the way the God comic did? It. So what's the point? <laughs> I did not know that was a thing. Yeah, the the old Logan comics are weird. <laughs> you don't have them being chased by Hulk's redneck kids who are wearing Confederate hats and carrying like beat up shotguns over their shoulders. Like, what, what what's the point? Comics are traditionally a medium of nuance and subtlety. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Instead, Logan the film ends up kind of being like the Wizard. That's all <sighs> I'll be saying. I'm done saying words. It also felt like a kind of smack in the face after Days of Future Past. Like, oh, yeah, now we're going to show away everything interesting we could have done. Well, don't worry. They, they've apparently paid Hugh Jackman some exorbitant amount of money <laughs> to come back to 
and just be Wolverine forever, I guess. <sighs> Man, how, how, do you think do you think that like people, if you're listening to this and you're like 21 or 22 or even like 23 or 24, leave a comment about how you feel that nothing that you recognize in your lifetime will ever be touched again. It's just all going to be the late nineties until, <laughs> until the earth's biosphere collapses. Well, when they're that young, it hasn't had time to set in. Like there is, I believe, uh, as someone in their mid thirties, someone of that age probably isn't used to the notion of, you know, we used to have characters that would change actors, but even James Bond stopped doing that. <laughs> <laughs> there used to be weird opportunities for new action stars on the rise and all sorts of other things. Worth noting, Ethan Hill, I believe, from Mission Impossible. Ethan Hunt from Mission Impossible used to be a different actor and then became Tom Cruise forever. This just keeps happening. It's this weird 90s to aughts period where we just froze all of culture and went, this, we're good. But, yeah, but, yeah, but yes, uh Sound off in the comments, Zoomers, about uh, how you feel that you keep seeing some shit that you've never heard of and never thought about being revived, and then everybody over 30 doing, like, the YouTube thumbnail <laughs> point at it, <laughs> and that's going to be the rest of your life forever? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> okay, let's go watch that. Okay, let's go watch that. X-Men Origins Wolverine sure is a movie that didn't have a writer. <laughs> <laughs> now, before I say the thing I uh, usually say, uh, if you'd like to watch that movie with us, uh, you know, go back in time and, and watch that movie with us, you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash gbpodcasts. For $5 a month, you get access to many benefits. Not least, most relevant in this case, is the commentary track we just recorded for X-Men Origins Wolverine. So, uh, patreon.com slash GB podcast. Dan, what did you think of X-Men Origins Wolverine? It was the first X-Men film I showed up for in a theater and was thoroughly disappointed by. This many years on, the experience hasn't really changed. Gambit sucks. Why'd they even fucking put him in the movie? <laughs> the movie feels like Logan driving in a circle over and over. He's like, I need to get away. Uh -uh, I need to find him again. Uh -uh, I need to get away. <laughs> It's a fucking mess of a film with bad special effects all over it. And I think there's maybe 20 good minutes in the whole damn thing or something. It really does stop once the business shows up at his lumber jacking job. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Having said all of that, I'm still going to give it a three. <laughs> We've watched way worse on the show. Yeah, we have. <laughs> This is just personally upsetting stuff. That's fair. Bob. Yeah, this movie's bad, but like, I still enjoy good bits of it. <laughs> so I'm also going to give it a three. There's still a lot to look forward to seeing. Like, how bad is this going to look? <laughs> You're just always on the edge of your seat. <laughs> no, I, I, I perfectly remembered that mirror <laughs> shot for my entire life. <laughs> Yeah, well, that one's just ingrained, but it's all the smaller shots. The weird angle on the claws. How are they going to do that? Not well. <laughs> How long are the claws? <laughs> Aggro. This movie is a uh, tragedy. I think if you had a writer on it who was half asleep, you could have <laughs> coasted into a six. Easy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I will I will grudgingly give this movie like a two. <laughs> it's like this is a picked over corpse that was served as a main course. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like on this show I talk a lot about like the furniture test. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Where would you change the channel if you were building furniture and this was on? I wouldn't until the last 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It becomes distractingly so, bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to have, but at the same time, I also want other people to watch it now. 
because it shits its pants so hard in the last 20 minutes. Uh, so I'm going to give this a one. It would be a two or a three if not for the last 20 minutes just throwing a fucking anchor around its neck. <laughs> Maybe it's just me, but I feel like there's literally nothing good in the film once the blob scene ends. Mm -hmm. Like in the boxing ring, every moment from then on, I'm various scales of angry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. I, I think it's since it's been so long since I originally saw this. All of these are just old wounds, and I'm like, yeah, it's not that bad anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, all that's, scar tissue now. <laughs> reopening old wounds does not go, <laughs> oh, it's fine. <laughs> it, it turns out that I, I, I had uh, constructed a memory of this film out of, like, five or six cool shots. <laughs> And going through this was like fucking Melissa remembers. It was like dredging up repressed trauma. Uh, real quick, because I won't get to squeeze this in any other part. And I, for whatever reason, did bring it up in the fucking uh, uh, commentary track, which is where it really belongs. I remember leaving the theater and unbeknownst to me, a friend who is also really into X-Men, like the comic books and stuff, was in the same showing as me. Mm. And I ran into her and I was like, hey, did you like the movie? She's like, I'm fucking pissed over everything with Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah I, I get that. And he's uh, literally nothing like this, is he? <laughs> we need to get to our segments now, I guess. First off is best character. Aggro, who's the best character? Oh, uh, that's see, it's hard because there is a character that is the best character for the first 10 minutes of the movie and then is is the worst part of the movie later. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I can in good conscience pick them. Uh, so since I went first, I'm just going to pick Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. Oh, darn He's it. clearly the highlight. <laughs> I've been robbed. You've all been robbed. <laughs> that sure was easy. <laughs> sure was the only cool and good character in this whole movie. Well, now that now that there's no other character, Dan, who's the best character? Old man with a gun. He's funny as hell. He's yeah. worried about his wife having a heart attack because of Hugh Jackman's wicked awesome body. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Wolverine chopped his fucking sink in half and he, him and his wife, they just look at him and go, just put that down and eat some dinner. We're just simple country folk. And I'm like, I love these two. They're, they're probably the best part of this conversation. I, I wish that this movie had just time for him to live there. Like, if we had that yeah. for 30 minutes, it would have been great. We have to go get Gambit. We have to go box yeah, unfortunately, the blob. We, unfortunately, we had already spent fucking 40 minutes. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, that, that intro should have been done in, like, 20 we have to explain where the metal for adamantium comes from, question mark. We need to see their entire mission. <laughs> they did multiple missions. We didn't need more than the one where they establish adamantium exists. We need a long montage of every war they've been in. Yes, an extremely long montage. No, we did. That was a highlight of the fucking movie. <laughs> it was. I'm just saying, there's a lot we needed in that intro. But because no one cut anything at any point, it's just so bizarre to be like, okay, now now we're, now he's kind of Wolverine halfway through the movie. Yeah, we should have. You know what they should have done? Mm. Volume one, volume two, like Kill Bill. Oh my god, mm. that much Wolverine! No. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, Wolverine is Wolverine is like the second most popular comic character of all time. If anybody justifies it, I guess it's him. Yeah, they end up doing three movies anyway. It yeah. would have been way better if it was just planned that way. We should have just had Tarantino's X-Men Origins Wolverine. <laughs> That'd be a very different movie. I'd be very excited to see. I feel like if you chopped this movie into two and you gave each end of it more runtime, that would be the biggest drop ever eclipsing the second and third Matrix films <laughs> by a long shot. <laughs> Presumably, this would be a, a project made with writers. <laughs> <laughs> we made it two movies, so it delayed production so we could wait till the strike's over. Right. Yeah, it, oh, remember, it only lasted 100 days. They could have waited and not had this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, you know, in retrospect, that seems like a, a sane idea that they maybe should have looked into. Bob, who's the best character? <laughs> I'm going to give it to Gambit. 
he sucks and I hate this interpretation of him, <laughs> oh but I get to see Gambit on screen in a film. Yeah. <laughs> he does the card thing at once. That's enough for me. Motherfucker, you eating unsalted saltines, unteens, and going, it's food. Yes. It's the Gambit you got. <laughs> Fuck, I have to go. Uh, <laughs> Stryker is really funny with how bizarre and incompetent he is. He is maybe the least competent interpretation of this character whose whole thing is being incompetent. <laughs> <laughs> like, none of the decisions... We're, we're, we're like Jin Kari levels of what was his plan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's great because like he's got a great voice and some gravitas in this movie, mm-hmm. and it, it's like it's like the end of Thirty Rock. It's like, wait a minute, you don't have any idea what you're doing. You're just an alcoholic with a great voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that that takes us to worst character. Dan, who's Gambit. the worst character? Gambit. Okay, <laughs> Gambit. No, be, t- that motherfucker filled a role. And it was like, we can't put anyone else there now. I mean, they were going to. They just canceled the movie. Yeah, fucking assholes. <laughs> I'm so mad. If audiences really fell in love with Gambit in this film, they would have been motivated enough. Yeah, absolutely. But they fucked it. They did. Instead, they're like Magneto. And we're going to get the guy from the Assassin's Creed movie to play him. This is totally no, the order of yeah, events. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, I, I thought that went in the opposite direction. But we're maybe gonna get I'm... the guy who played Steve Jobs to play, play him. Ashton Kutcher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <Yes>. that one. <laughs> well, damn, Charles, I can't control the weather. <laughs> <laughs> Studio applause. <laughs> Is Charles just played by the other guys from that 70s show? <laughs> like the main character? No, he's already Eddie Brock, remember? <laughs> oh, you're right. We can't have the double up. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> they should have... Uh... <laughs> Fucking the guy who played Red Foreman. Yes. Yes. Him be yeah, Charles that, that's Xavier. exactly... Oh, that's... my God. That's exactly where I was going. We need to have uh, we need to have Kurtwood Smith, Charles Xavier. <laughs> fucking rule. <laughs> Although he's like a fucking million years old now. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he's it's eighty still, now. It's still it's funny. Old. It's still funny. Although he's younger than Patrick Stewart. <laughs> oh my god. I think he is. I think Patrick Stewart's fucking ancient. Yeah, he's eighty three, so he's a little bit younger. <laughs> Agro, who's the worst character? Yes! Kayla! Fuck her! She fuck. is just the god worst. God damn it. Oh my god. Like, this movie was bad, and then she came back. Uh-huh. <laughs> Holy shit. Logan, no. Don't kill Victor. For some reason. He's going to help you in the Deadpool fight. I know this. Also, he's in X-Men 1. Yeah, he you can He has can't. to be in X-Men 1. <laughs> Well, I guess I'll go. Uh, fuck. I don't know the name of the character he plays, but Will I Am? <laughs> <laughs> he really didn't bring much to the movie, and also, so, so, sorry, man, your your acting was not acting. <laughs> like, I get it's hard, but I don't know, maybe you could have prepared a little bit more? I don't even know if he was ever in any other fucking movies. Yeah, I don't know if he was. It feels like he was. I feel like I've seen his name attached to other movies, but I don't remember. Bob. (sighs) I'm going to give it to Zero. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they give him that really cool scene where they introduce him, and then after that, he becomes completely incompetent and flies a chopper. (laughs) Yeah, but first he, like, runs and jumps into the chopper, and that's pretty cool. Right, and I feel like maybe he should have jumped out of it at some point. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like m- maybe at the point at which Wolverine is flying toward it, claws first. Right, that would be a good point. Now I guess we need to move on to scenes. We're doubling up, Bob. What's the best scene? <laughs> oh, okay, there's a good scene in this movie. I swear. Let's see. 
Bob's putting in putting on Cerebro right now, <laughs> right. trying to search his memories of this film to find a good scene. Searching the fucking planet. <laughs> oh man. Um let's see. Uh Robert, you're using Cerebro too hard. <laughs> it will hemorrhage your brain. I'm like, none of the fight scenes were actually good, but they were kind of fun. Uh, let's see. I'll go with the the, the dumb motorcycle chase one. Hell yeah. It looked yeah. terrible, but it, there were some really funny moments during it. That oh, yeah. claw turn fucking rules. <laughs> it does. God, did it look terrible. That it's... was embarrassing. Mm hmm. I'm up. Uh, the scene where a gambit is trying to escape up the fire escape and Wolverine is <laughs> slashing away at it with his claws like fucking Looney Tunes shit. <laughs> you hear the typewriter sounds as he just like ka -ching as he slams it to the right and left. <laughs> Agra. I'm going to have to go with the war montage in the opening. It's just. It's really cool. Yeah. It's the best looking part of this whole film. Yeah, it does have a lot of fun there, mm -hmm. honestly. And like, oh, look at style. this neat concept that we shot with a budget and people on screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it almost doesn't belong with this film. Yeah. Kind of like everything that preceded the, that as well. Yeah, that, uh, that opening writes a check. That this movie does <laughs> not get. <gash. laughs> not at all. Man, imagine if this movie was just, hey, these wars. That'd be neat. I don't I don't honestly want to see the Civil War movie <laughs> with Wolverine and Sabretooth. I don't want to have to see what happens when you task a writer's room to have Logan make a speech about that time period. Maybe maybe I, I feel like you could just include one scene of like Tony Stark going and asking Wolverine to to register and then they just do like they play grab bag and have him go blow it out your ass and then that's all he's in the movie <laughs> like that movie's gonna end and I'm, I'm gonna be burdened with the knowledge of what a Hollywood writer's room thinks Harriet Tubman's mutant superpower would be <laughs> oh oh <laughs> Dan um so I'm gonna need you all to do a mental exercise okay because uh, I've done this every time I've remembered this film. <sighs> Erase the mirror shot with the claw from your brain. So everything involving the old lady and the old man, that whole sequence, mm -hmm. like him running up naked, him in the barn, the the, the very next so the dinner, all all that, all that, and him getting on the chopper and it being heavy, him being heavy. Yeah, and he's like, I put on some weight recently, and then the studio applause went off. All of that. It's so good. In my recollection, every time I go to remember this movie, it's that and the lumberjack shit at the beginning. That those are the highlights of the film. Mm -hmm. If I touch any other part of the film, it'll be like that's so Raven, and we'll zoom into my brain as I remember. <laughs> yeah, and they're stuck on the elevator. And he makes a high protein diet joke, and then it, later in the movie, his mouth is sewed shut because he's Deadpool. <laughs> That that to me is the the best part of this film. It's really a shame that the worst special effects shot of the films in the bathroom. <laughs> well, nothing in particular is happening. <laughs> he just needed to have claws come out of his hand and turn it in 3D's face and have it track his arm. Oh my god! They even did practical stuff for like things falling apart. Hmm? Why would the claws have to be there? I don't... <laughs> Well, here's. Do you want to go to an easier category? The worst scene. <laughs> of course. We're on the beach. Could you find a grid of sand? <laughs> uh, I'll start us off on worst scene. Uh, the scene at the end where Kayla grabs Stryker's ankle and is now mind controlling him. And then she says, I'd have you kill yourself, but then I would be just as bad as you, man, who was experimenting on children and ran a government block black ops organization that killed people constantly and uh, apparently literally sowed war in Africa in order to get rare earth metals. Uh, so instead, I'm just going to have you walk. <laughs> Boo. God, fuck. I got worst. so fucking yeah. pissed. Yeah. Fuck. Fuck her. They thought that was a really sick girl boss moment. <laughs> 
that's the worst part that it's uh -huh. like this is so lame and you could tell they thought it was so cool like a human wrote it and like you, you you get from that scene that they know that a moral high ground is something they should have uh-huh but they don't understand how to establish one <laughs> bob my scene is actually right before chris's scene <laughs> God. After the building collapses in the dust cloud forms, uh -huh. Gambit appears to save Logan and then leaves so that Logan can have his whole emotional thing with his wife and then the, the general. And then Gambit managed to do another scene within the same second and do nothing over <laughs> there as well. He goes and shows up to look at the X-Men playing pick up people with Xavier. Could <laughs> Can you tell Gambit really wasn't supposed to be in this movie? <laughs> right. He managed to write two scenes where he does nothing. Bob, I'd argue every scene he's in is a scene where he manages to do nothing. <laughs> and they made them one scene. It was it was baffling. Mm. <laughs> that that fucking scene like where he saves Logan from the falling debris and is like, ha ha, and does like a somersault from off camera to smash a big piece of rubble as it falls was embarrassing. Oh. Yeah, it's fucking <laughs> terrible. Dan, do you have a Yes, the chain scene remains you'd like? unbroken! So my scene is right before Bob's scene! <laughs> <laughs> it is the fight between Wolverine and Deadpool on top of the nuclear reactor. It has never looked good. For some reason, every TV display, they were trying to show off how good these TVs looked. They kept showing this fight scene for years. <laughs> yes. It's a horrible part of this movie. It's such a farce of how hideous it is and how stupid all the action is. he does a beat battle with his claws and deflects the fucking beam <laughs> what is he's pretty cool <laughs> and then there's like the very beginning of the scene is the moment you go wait what as wolverine decides to climb a mo nuclear reactor for no reason yep mm hmm Normally, when that happens in a movie, you find out he had a plan and involved a nuclear meltdown to kill. Yeah, but Deadpool. So, sometimes you see a cooling tower and you just, you just get that manly urge to climb it. <laughs> what is this, an infamous game? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely terrible, that fucking fight scene. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's embarrassing. Like, so many things about this movie are embarrassing. <laughs> Where did the credits just have action director? No one. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, here's the question. Will aggro be able to continue the chain by it being connected to all three of our worst scenes? <laughs> yeah, so right before yeah! the Wolverine Sabretooth fight, there's this scene where Kayla comes back into the movie yeah. for no goddamn reason other than to be the worst. <laughs> So true. You just like you see her in silhouette behind Logan, and you're like, if a meteor could just strike me down right now before they pull focus on that horrible character, I can go to hell happy. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it, didn't achieve anything. If you completely removed her, he just beats up Sabretooth, Deadpool shows up and he fights them. Sabretooth helps him fight Deadpool because they're brothers. And then what maybe he's recuperating or like he, he got winded fighting Deadpool and Stryker just shows up and shoots him in the head. Nothing would change. Yeah. And then the military police show up at the island to arrest Stryker. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. The, no bearing. But here's the thing that would that would make her a tragic woman in a film. She died to give the main character motivation in that case. But this is way deeper. <laughs> Because she still she, did that, but it took way longer and was more annoying. <laughs> <laughs> she died twice in this film as an important structure of the, the first, film. The yeah. first time it's like, oh, what a tragedy. The second time it's like, God, finally. <laughs> <laughs> Man, us all selecting these scenes like those last 20 minutes of this movie sure were terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, before that, I was kind of like, well, this looks really fucking bad and has a structure that makes no sense. But that kind of reminds me of the first comic book movies where they didn't hadn't all been ground into the Marvel formula. Right. Yeah. And then it's, <laughs> and at the end, it's just like, oh, no wonder everybody was like, please buy Fox, please buy Fox, please buy Fox. 
You know, it's a well. You have to watch X Men Apocalypse to really understand why everyone was <laughs> pleased by Fox. It was really messed up when Gambit shoved that baby in that microwave. <laughs> why? Why did he do that? <laughs> Man, it's it, it's so cool that they that Disney bought Fox and ruined the world forever, and they aren't even going to get to add, add the X Men into the MCU because it's going to fucking be dead before they can. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like they should have done that years ago. What is wrong with them? Don't worry, Bob. I'm sure once they get through secret wars currently planned for I think 2028, uh, they'll they'll per they'll perfectly segue that into uh yeah. introducing the Fantastic Four and the X Men into Marvel. God, who cares about Fantastic Four? Jesus. How yeah, that... nobody. I I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Fantastic Four shooters. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> Someone has to have cared. Didn't they do three Fantastic Four films? There's like two reboots at uh, least. They did two of the original ones that both neither did very good, and then they did a reboot that did not do very good. So uh, that, that's the end of our segments. Y'all better fucking pray that this writer strike ends, or, or the cursed content will continue to get worse <laughs> yeah. until until it is over. Please just pay them, please. Oh my God. For no one's sake other than my own, please pay your writers. <laughs> like, like even if paying the people who produce the thing from which you profit has has no meaning to you, we just had to watch X Men Origins Wolverine on Blu-ray in 2023. <laughs> Morally, you owe us. <laughs> The executive producers for this Gig Boots video are Esme, Ely Broyles, Spaceman Spiff, Red Blaze 27, Brendan O'Sullivan, A Reminder for Symphony of War, Cooper Tank, Very Best Plot, Iconic Bane, and Rado. Thank you very much to our executive producers, and also these guys. If you want to become an executive producer or normal patron, head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today.